Dharmakirti, Florida, c. 6th or 7th century was an influential Indian Buddhist philosopher who worked at Nalanda. He was one of the key scholars of epistemology pramana in Buddhist philosophy, and is associated with the Yogacara and Sautrantika schools. He was also one of the primary theorists of Buddhist atomism. His works influenced the scholars of Mimamsa, Nyaya and Shaivism schools of Hindu philosophy as well as scholars of Jainism, Dharmakirti's Pramanavartika, his largest and most important work, was very influential in India and Tibet as a central text on pramana valid knowledge instruments and was widely commented on by various Indian and Tibetan scholars. His texts remain part of studies in the monasteries of Tibetan Buddhism. Topic: History. Little is known for certain about the life of Dharmakirti. Tibetan hagiographies suggest he was a Brahmin born in South India and was the nephew of the Mimamsa scholar Kumarila Bhatta. When he was young, Kumarila spoke abusively towards Dharmakirti as he was taking his Brahmanical garments. This led Dharmakirti to take the robes of the Buddhist order instead, resolving to vanquish all the heretics. As a student of Buddhism, he first studied under Isvarasena, and later moved to Nalanda where he interacted with 6th century Dharmapala. However, the accuracy of the Tibetan hagiographies is uncertain, and scholars place him in the 7th century instead. This is because of inconsistencies in different Tibetan and Chinese texts, and because it is around the middle of 7th century, and thereafter, that Indian texts begin discussing his ideas, such as the citation of Dharmakirti verses in the works of Adi Shankara. Dharmakirti is placed by most scholars to have lived between 600 to 660 CE, but a few place him earlier. Dharmakirti is credited with building upon the work of Dignaga, the pioneer of Buddhist logic, and Dharmakirti has ever since been influential in the Buddhist tradition. His theories became normative in Tibet and are studied to this day as a part of the basic monastic curriculum. Dharmakirti worked at Nalanda as a lay Buddhist, not as an ordained monk, and his work reflects his belief that no one will understand the value of his work, his efforts soon forgotten. History proved his fears wrong. Philosophy Topic Historical Context The Buddhist works such as the Yogacarabhumi Sastra and the Mahayana Sutralankara composed before the 6th century, on Hetavidya logic, dialectics are unsystematic, whose approach and structure are hesiological, proselytical and apologetic. Their aims were to defeat non-Buddhist opponents Hinduism, Jainism, Ajivakism, others, defend the ideas of Buddhism, develop a line of arguments that monks can use to convert those who doubt Buddhism and to strengthen the faith of Buddhists who begin to develop doubts. Around the middle of the 6th century, possibly to address the polemics of non-Buddhist traditions with their pramana foundations, the Buddhist scholar Dignaga shifted the emphasis from dialectics to more systematic epistemology and logic, retaining the hesiological and apologetic focus. Dharmakirti followed in Dignaga footsteps, and is credited with systematic philosophical doctrines on Buddhist epistemology, which Vincent Elchinger states, has a full-fledged positive, direct apologetic commitment. Dharmakirti lived during the collapse of the Gupta Empire, a time of great insecurity for Buddhist institutions. 
The role of Buddhist logic was seen as an intellectual defense against Hindu philosophical arguments formulated by epistemically sophisticated traditions like the Nyaya school. However, Dharmakirti and his followers also held that the study of reasoning and its application was an important tool for soteriological ends. Epistemology Dharmakirti's philosophy is based on the need to establish a theory of logical validity and certainty grounded in causality. Following Dignaga's Pramanasamukhya, Dharmakirti also holds that there are only two instruments of knowledge or valid cognition pramana, perception, pratyaksa, and inference, anamana. Perception is a non-conceptual knowing of particulars which is bound by causality, while inference is reasonable, linguistic and conceptual. In the Pramanavatika Dharmakirti defines a pramana as a «reliable cognition». What it means for a cognition to be reliable has been interpreted in different ways. Following commentators like Dharmatera, who define it as meaning that a cognition is able to lead to the obtaining of one's desired object, some modern scholars such as José I. Cabezón have interpreted Dharmakirti as defending a form of pragmatism. Tilleman sees him as holding to a weak form of correspondence theory, which holds that to confirm causal efficacy. Arthakriasthiti is to have a justification that an object of cognition has the causal powers we expected. That justification comes through a certain kind of non-conceptual perception pratyaksa, which is said to be an «intrinsical source of knowledge» pramanya, which is ultimately reliable. Dharmakirti sees a cognition as being valid if it has a causal connection with the object of cognition through an intrinsically valid, un conceptual perception of the object which does not err regarding its functionality. As Dharmakirti says, a pramana is a reliable cognition. As for reliability, it consists in this cognition's compliance with the object's capacity to perform a function. Pramanavatika 2.1 AC, Dharmakirti also holds that there were certain extraordinary epistemic warrants, such as the words of the Buddha, who was said to be an authoritative, reliable person as well as the inconceivable perception of a yogi yogi pratyaksa. On the role of scriptural authority, Dharmakirti has a moderate and nuanced position. For Dharmakirti, scripture Buddhist or otherwise, is not a genuine and independent mean of valid cognition. He held that one should not use scripture to guide one on matters which can be decided by factual and rational means and that one is not to be faulted for rejecting unreasonable parts of the scriptures of one's school. However scripture is to be relied upon when dealing with radically inaccessible things", such as the laws of karma and soteriology. However according to Dharmakirti scripture is a fallible source of knowledge and has no claim to certainty. Metaphysics <inaudible> 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 According to Buddhologist Tom Tillemans, Dharmakirti's ideas constitute a nominalist philosophy which disagrees with the Madhyamaka philosophy, by asserting that some entities are real. Dharmakirti states that the real is only the momentarily existing particulars svalaksana, and any universal samanyalaksana is unreal and a fiction. He criticized the Nyaya theory of universals by arguing that since they have no causal efficacy, there is no rational reason to posit them. 
what is real must have powers sakti, fitness yogyata, or causal properties which is what individuates a real particular as an object of perception. Dharmakirti writes, "...whatever has causal powers that really exists this theory of causal properties has been interpreted as a form of trope theory. Svalaksana are said to be partless, undivided and property-less, and yet they impart a causal force which give rise to perceptual cognitions, which are direct reflections of the particulars. Dharmakirti's ultimately real particulars are contrasted with conventionally real entities samurtasat as part of his presentation of the Buddhist Two Truths doctrine. The conventionally real for him are based on linguistic categories, intellectual constructs and erroneous superimpositions on the flow of reality, such as the idea that universals exist. According to Dharmakirti, cognitive distortion of the direct perception of particulars occurs during the process of recognition and perceptual judgment which arises due to latent tendencies in the mind left over from past impressions of similar perceptions. These latent dispositions come together into constructed representations of the previously experienced object at the moment of perception, and hence it is an imposed error on the real, a pseudo-perception which conceals reality while at the same time being practically useful for navigating it. Ignorance avidya for Dharmakirti is conceptuality, pseudo-perception and superimposition overlaid on the naturally radiant nature of pure perception. By correcting these defilements of perception through mental cultivation as well as using inference to gain insight born of rational reflection. Sintamayi Prajna a Buddhist yogi is able to better see the true nature of reality until his perception is fully perfected. Dharmakirti, again following Dignaga, also holds that that things as they are in themselves are ineffable aviapadasya. Language is never about the things in themselves, only about conceptual fictions, hence they are nominalists. Due to this theory, the main issue for Dharmakirti becomes how to explain that it is possible for our arbitrary and conventional linguistic schemas to refer to perceptual particulars which are ineffable and non-conceptual. To explain this gap between conceptual schema and perceptual content, Dharmakirti takes up Dignaga's theory of exclusion. Apoha. Dignaga's view is that a word talks about entities only as they are qualified by the negation of other things." Dharmakirti's unique take on this nominalist theory, which underlies his entire system, is to reinterpret it in terms of causal efficacy. Arthakriya, which can also be translated as telic function, functionality, and fulfillment of purpose. Dharmakirti developed his philosophical system to defend Buddhist doctrines, so it is no surprise that he developed a number of arguments for rebirth. The Four Noble Truths, the authority of the Buddha, karma, anatta, and compassion, as well as attacking Brahmanical views such as the authority of the Vedas. Dharmakirti also defended the Buddhist theory of momentariness which held that dharmas spontaneously perish the moment they arise. Dharmakirti came up with an argument for the theory which stated that since anything that really exists has a causal power, the fact that its causal power is in effect proves it is always changing. For Dharmakirti, nothing could be a cause while remaining the same, and any permanent thing would be causally inert. Philosophy of mind 
Dharmakirti defends Dignaga's theory of consciousness being non-conceptually reflexive svasamviti or svasamvedana. This is the idea that an act of intentional consciousness is also aware of itself as aware. Consciousness is said to illuminate itself like a lamp that illuminates objects in a room as well as itself. Dharmakirti also defends the Yogacara theory of awareness only, which held that external objects of perception do not exist. According to Dharmakirti, an object of cognition is not external or separate from the act of cognition itself. This is because the object is "...necessarily experienced simultaneously with the cognition itself." Pramanavartika 3.387 the view that there is a duality between an object and a subjective cognition arises out of ignorance. Dharmakirti's substantiation of other mind streams is a treatise on the nature of the mind stream and Buddhist response to the problem of other minds. Dharmakirti held the mind stream to be beginning less, yet also described the mind stream as a temporal sequence, and that as there are no true beginnings, there are no true endings, hence, the beginningless time motif that is frequently used to describe the concept of mindstream. Affiliation There is disagreement among Indian and Tibetan doxographers as to how to categorize Dharmakirti's thought. The Gelug school asserts that he expressed Yogacara views, most non-Gelug Tibetan commentators assert that he expressed Sautrantika views and, according to one Tibetan source, a number of renowned later Indian Madhyamikas asserted that he expressed Madhyamaka views. Among modern scholars, some like Tillemans argue that Dharmakirti represented the Yogacara school, while Amar Singh argues that he was a Sautrantika. For Christine Mulliken Kate, Dharmakirti represents a synthesis of two schools of Indian Buddhism, the Sautrantika and the Yogacara. Likewise, Dan Arnold argues that Dharmakirti's alternating philosophical perspectives of Sautrantika and Yogacara views are ultimately compatible and are applied at different levels of his sliding scale of analysis. There is also a tendency to see Dignaga and Dharmakirti as founding a new type of Buddhist school or tradition, which is known in Tibetan as those who follow reasoning. Riggs Pa Rjes Su Brang ba and sometimes is known in modern literature as Pramanavada. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Writings and commentaries. Dharmakirti is credited with the following major works. Sambanda Parikshavti Analysis of Relations. Pramanavanissaya ascertainment of valid cognition Pramanavatika Karika commentary on Dignaga's compendium of valid cognition Pramanavatika Svavti auto commentary on the above text Nyayabinda Prakarana drop of logic Hetubanduna Maprakarana drop of reason Samtanantara Siddhinama Prakarana proof of others mind streams Vadanyayanama Prakarana reasoning for debate there are various commentaries by later thinkers on Dharmakirti the earliest commentators are the Indian scholars Devendrabuddhi ca 675 CE and Sakyabuddhi ca 700 CE 
Other Indian commentators include Karnakagoman, Prajnakaragupta, Manarathanandan, Ravi Gupta, and Sankaranandana. He was extremely influential in Tibet, where Phya Pa Chos Kyi Seng Ge wrote the first summary of his works, called Clearing of Mental Obscuration with Respect to the Seven Treatises on Valid Cognition. T Shad Ma Sde Bdun Yid Gi Mun Sel. Sakya Pandita wrote the Treasure on the Science of Valid Cognition and interpreted Dharmakirti as an anti realist against Phya Pa's realism. These two main interpretations of Dharmakirti became the foundation for most debates in Tibetan epistemology. See also Pramana Buddhist atomism Epistemology Dignaga William of Ockham